Cody Clark is a recent college graduate who uses his magic routines not only to entertain but to educate as well. Cody, diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder as a toddler, proves that with support and the right learning environment, amazing things are possible. Cody, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Diane. You're welcome. You were diagnosed at 15 months with autism. You were nonverbal until kindergarten. What kind of programs did you go through to help you build and develop skills? Well, immediately after I got diagnosed, my parents put me in the University of Louisville STAR program, which is an intensive therapy program for autism that's one of the best in the country. They put me in speech therapy so I could learn how to talk, occupational therapy so I could learn how to write, how to You're use nice. my hands, how to dress. Aww. And then my ECE right. teachers at elementary school helped me with taking Aww. tests, with socializing with my peers. So I've had a lot of therapy. Your parents then must have really uh, been an, an integral part of, of you building your skills. How did they help you with some of the challenges growing up? Well, when I was very young and was actually nonverbal, they would take Polaroid pictures of various items. So until I could talk, I could just point and they could get what I needed. Now, you, we were talking about the programs that you went through. Were there programs for them so that they would know how best to help? Uh, I think there was. I know there are for sure now. There are a lot of autism support groups for parents. Not as much back in the early 90s as there are now, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there were some. I imagine just knowing that they were there for you um, means a lot. Yes, it means a lot to me. It gave me a lot of self-confidence back then, and it's nice to know that they still love me very much now. <laughs> You said um, at one point in time, I was reading uh, some of your background, that you were reluctant to share with anyone that you were diagnosed with autism. Why did you feel that way? Well, because I'm on the high functioning end of the spectrum, I thought I could just hide it. I thought people would never be able to tell. And I guess there was a little shame, a little fear that if they knew I was autistic, they wouldn't hire me for stuff or be my friend, stuff like that. Right. Right. Do you think that, that a lot of other people feel that way with this diagnosis? Uh, oh, yes. So something that you, you work through on your own to overcome and build your confidence. Yes, mainly through the magic. The magic, first of all, that fascinates you so much. Well, just being able to create a unique moment that can only happen in person to a live audience. Like magic's not something you can really capture on TV or Netflix. You have to be there to see it. And I guess I like working with the props since that makes my hands feel comfortable. A lot of us have motor skills issues, so the sleight of hand is very therapeutic. And also for me, since I'm a big writer, the opportunity to combine the magic routine with the story. How did you get involved with this? Were you, were you, were you little and you liked magic, or, or when did this start? I always liked the magicians at the Kentucky State Fair, but it wasn't until I was 11 years old and saw a magic show at a vacation in Gulf Shores, Alabama, that I realized I could actually do magic because the magician called me up on stage, had me help him, help him out. You were very brave. <laughs> yes, I was very brave, especially since I put the blade in the Sawing a Lady in Half Illusion. No way. <laughs> yes. Now, when did you think, was there a moment in, in this process that you thought you could do this as a career? I mean, that was, that's way beyond just enjoying it. Well, that was one of the first things I thought right then and there, since I always wanted to be a professional entertainer of some sort, but I tried to sing, couldn't do that. Tried to dance, couldn't do that. Same with acting. Then when I discovered through the magic show by helping out the magician that I could potentially do magic, I immediately wanted to be a professional magician. How does the magic, your routine, how does that help you with your autism? Well, in order to practice a magic routine, you have to practice socializing. So it's essentially a social script. Every time I perform, I'm practicing a conversation. And over time, my conversational skills have improved. And like I was saying, the sleight of hand is therapeutic for my motor skills. It's improved my handwriting. And so many people are like, really, you can do sleight of hand even though your handwriting is bad? Now, do you write your material? Uh, yes, I write all my scripts. So you are also learning the, the magic as, as you are also presenting it in a form for the audience. Exactly. I combine the right story for right, the right routine since I view magic as a metaphor. You use autism, you, you integrate it into your act. How, how, are you, how are you doing that? And how, how does the audience react? Well, essentially, my show, Cody Clark, A Different Way of Thinking, is a linear narrative about be me being on the autism spectrum, starting from my birth until my graduation from U of L. And I tell stories by pairing the individual events with the magic routines to show both how people with autism are different, but also how people with autism are the exact same as anyone else. I have stories about playing t-ball, about going to my grandma's house, 
then also stories about some of my fears about being on the spectrum, some of the stereotypes, and also the romantic rejection that comes from being a guy on the spectrum trying to date. A lot of different aspects to consider. Cody, with the audience, do you find that they change throughout your, your performance? Do you think they're uneasy at first, or are, are they more accepting? How, how, do you, how do you feel that you relate with the audience like that? Well, I address that right away. I do a routine for Rubik's Cube that at first it's like, oh yes, he's solving a puzzle. Then I'm like, I do that because I'm autistic. And then they start laughing, and I let them know it's okay to laugh. It's okay to get into the story. Is so that, I ease them into right. it. Right. I would think that, you know, aside from you being uncomfortable at times, that your audience may not, because they just don't understand or, or they're not sure of what to do. You talk about using magic as, as a way to bring that message, spread that message of understanding and acceptance. Why do you think magic is such a bridge, a connector for people like that? Uh, because magic is something a lot of people like. It's family friendly, so the magic in a way is non-threatening. Like we're a straight up uh, one man show about being autistic could be seen as more but threatening. Pairing it with a magic show, people are like, oh, at the end of the day, it'll at least be a fun magic show. Then they leave inspired and changed about their thoughts on autism. Have you been doing the magic um, all through the, your college career as yes, well? Yes, all through my college career. My theater classes at U of L helped me become a better performer, and my business classes at the College of Business have helped me market my shows. So you've been able to actually combine your love of magic with your education with a career. Oh, yes. Brilliant. I would think being a solo performer would be difficult no matter what. It takes a lot of courage yes. to get out there by yourself. What about challenges and rewards for you? Well, it is a lot of fun, especially since I get to hang out with unique people, and especially at the Fringe Theater Festivals, I get to network a lot. But it is challenging because it is freelance work, and it's not just apply one time and you're hired, but you have to keep on applying over and over and over again. It takes a lot of courage to get up solo in front of people. Yes, a lot of courage and then also a lot of time management since when you're your own business you have to manage your time very very well and that's something I've had to improve on over the years since that can be a weakness for some people with autism. I understand that you have loved trains yes. as well since you were a young child. How have you used that as another way to build a career? Well, my kids show is called Conductor Cody. It's a train themed magic show because like you said, I loved trains as a kid. And George Carlin back in the early 90s for PBS did Shining Time Station as Mr. Conductor. I essentially have lifted that character since he's no longer performing it. And then I'm actually doing magic with it. And there's Day Out with Thomas is still a big thing. So I'm trying to do the train museums. Right. And then of course, birthday parties, libraries and then the, tra the model train shows. You introduce an element of safety with that too, I believe. Oh uh, yes, railroad safety to make sure that you don't cross the crossing while the train is there and don't take pictures on the railroad tracks. Right, right. Very good work, very good. Do you think, Cody, that characters like Julia on Sesame Street bring a new w realm of awareness to people of what it's like to, to have autism and to interact with people? I think so, especially since until the past five years, not really many characters of autism has, have existed. Rain Man was really the first, and there wasn't really a lot of autistic characters following Rain Man until Julia, and then there's a lot of suspicion about Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. So being able to see people with autism succeed is very important. We just have to make sure going forward that it's not all stereotypes, that we're not all good at math since I'm not good at math at all, even though I'm autistic and that's the stereotype. Right, and I think it's important to see uh, people at different age levels as well as different places on the spectrum. I think all of those are contributing to, to helping people understand and, and maybe not even be so um, just timid about how to interact. Yes, I agree very much. You mentioned things that are important to you about your show. What do you want people, when they leave your show, what do you want them to remember about what you've done? I want them to remember the storytelling that I moved them with my magic, and I want them to remember that autism is nothing to be scared of, just a different way of thinking about life. You've accomplished so much. Cody, what other dreams do you have? Well, I do dream of being able to make my living at Magic full-time beyond right now. Right now I'm successful with that, but I do have to grow my business a lot to maintain that. And I want to do my show at autism conventions, and I may want to do like a modified version of the show on cruise ships. Just looking for new markets to perform the show, 
and I do eventually want to start writing books and so many people tell me I'm a good writer. That would be another um, excellent outlet and a, and a great medium for you with autism as well. You have big plans. Yes, I have big plans and big dreams. What, what, what advice do you have for other younger people who, who might be struggling and not sure of where they can go or how they can get help. What advice would you have? Well, just focus on your passion because through your passion you'll find people that care about you like the people in the Louisville Magic Club did for me, which is where I went to learn all my tricks. And then now that I'm touring French Theater Festivals, all the friends I met there, through your passions you find the friends that will, are willing to overlook the autism, people who are willing to help you out with the things you need. And also, just be yourself. Don't let your experiences at school being bullied uh, beat you up. That's so important. Cody, thank you. You've been a, a very big inspiration. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you.